the then governor of Punjab, biography that said it should only be published after he passes away. So Governor Pandey's biography is coming now. He didn't want it published. He resigned, as you know, immediately after Blue Star. He fell on the soul. He was a good bureaucrat, ICS officer. He took the blame. So you can't say just the governor's blame. Uh, so his biography is coming up later. So one way to do that is if you're talking about contemporary people, uh, etc., you don't want to uh, say all the things honestly. So I think he was debating that. I don't know what happened eventually when he was not there in the background when he was published. Uh, but I don't think that's that's really thrown much light. How does a how does a man who sometimes gets caricatured? You know, uh, it's not just that that thing was described to be an Indra Gandhi loyalist. As a child, I grew up on jokes, for example, about Chelsea's purported loyalty to Indra Gandhi to receive the border of him by some counties. How did a, a, a person who was seen to be that much beholden to Mrs. Gandhi end up being in the crosshairs of history? Well, I think we discovered now, and I think Lee Sandy's book is important for that. Um, because he's reproduced a conversation he had with Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi on a flight to a center, uh, in which he's spoken with such prejudice uh, about the president. And this was probably done sometime in 87. Uh, he was still president. And he spoke uh, scathingly. He seemed to have just shared the contempt. And I'll give an example here. I said, BK Nehru, who was his uncle, much more experienced, high officer, officer, uh, wrote a letter, it came to my table. Uh, he was governor and he had not gotten an appointment. So he says, my dear president, uh, I have sought an appointment and it's through your PC. I'm sure you were not asked, otherwise you always give me time. And then it's very interesting what he says after that. He says, I always enjoy meeting you because I find in you the wisdom of Indian sages. Now, here's a guy who's ICS, Nehru family, seen at all, he's an ambassador to the US. He could see in Gandhiji what Raji Bhandi could see, which is that there is native wisdom. And I think Prime Minister Modi has the same problem. Many people are looking for his degrees, the issues have become that. Nobody's talking about his experience, how he's gained it, multiple phases of his life. So unnecessarily the focus is on there. But again, somewhere there is that to that extent, he's probably not wrong when he calls people like us the uh, you know market then and all the all the elite or whatever it is. But, but that would be easy to understand if he did not, if Yadi did not have a, a good relationship with this with Gandhi. He came from the same stock. Why do you think that Rajiv Gandhi was so uncharitable, skeptical of suspicions of this? I think the explanation I give is that Mrs. Gandhi liked to have two camps around her. Every state had two leaders, and I think Sonia Gandhi and Rao Gandhi are still pretending. But Mrs. Gandhi, because she had a connect with the people, she could afford to play one leader against the other leader. So in our secretariat, we had Dhadam, who guarded her page. And you had M. L. Fotheda, who was on the political side, and I quoted P. K. Nehru on M. L. Fotheda. It's very interesting where he says that, very contentious P. K. Nehru saying that here is a person whose importance in the Indra Gandhi household I don't understand. This is very often people with limited abilities get to certain levels, but never get serious controlling political access to Mrs. Gandhi. So these two camps were always at each other. And Gandhi's elevation was a great success for her. So before I uh, before I step back into the past and specifically into um, into the Zelsing years, imagine if you will that uh, Gandhi is president today and the debate that is taking place around uh, what's happening in Parliament, who should be voting for Parliament for taking place. We know that President Murmur would sign. Uh, I, I think I could serve as the office of the president would be to me. She has not made any public or official comment, nor is she likely. But imagine if this were Italian Nelson as president, and there was a debate over 
the inauguration of Gandhi, which again we had instances in the past. We had really, really laid the foundation slowly. Indira Gandhi inaugurating it five years later, but the really is not there. When you see the same debate in the context of history, how do you see it? I think we can't, uh, we can't judge what Gandhi would have done, but I know what any good president should do. Yes. Which is have a chat with your prime minister because it is the right of a president to be consulted, to give advice. The constitution allows it. Let the prime minister follow it or not follow it. And I just told the newspaper which was interviewing me, and I said it should simply say, she should simply say, Prime Minister, this debate is neither good for you nor good for me. No, please, no, no, no interjections allowed. Please wait till at the end of the conversation. Yes, sir, you the prime No, sir, you are the conversation. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we have to move there. If you are moved, I'm sorry, 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 I'm Because uh, I can imagine Arjuna Prasad doing it, I can imagine a lot of Vishnu doing it, I can imagine Narayan doing it. And actually, a clever argument can be made where Prime Minister has taken the focus away from the two things where he would have beaten up the opposition, uh, which is the center and Swarga's birthday. Now, if the opposition stayed away because of that, it will become a religious political argument. Now they're saying, okay, because the president. So, Prime Minister actually put his own two elements out of play. But coming to the president, the president do have to leave, which I don't think this president will or most presidents will. I don't think reach the point where a president could have to leave. See, president's authority is moral. You are called commander in chief, the military doesn't report to you. You are called head of state, but really it's the prime minister who runs things. But what the constitution is giving you is that you have moral power. If you simply call in the prime minister and simply say, please resolve it, it's adversely affecting my office and it's affecting your office. I don't think any prime minister will ignore that. Because we assume that the president may take another step, may go public. Then, in a confrontation between a female prime minister, a female president uh, who comes from a certain background, and the prime minister, no prime minister. Uh, but it's where you play the game in a swap manner without becoming confrontation, and at the same time conveying that it is not in India's plan. And I think that's how good presidents function. They disagree in public, uh, and in private. But they do not necessarily make it a public step, which is what Rajiv Gandhi did with Kennedy. So let's come to that. Yeah. Let's come to that. Uh, you know, the way uh, the media tells the story, and I think I've heard it versions of it, is that Gandhi thought or contemplated or toyed with the idea of this system. Can you take us through exactly what the truth of that moment or that conflict was? How close did you come to it and what made you step back? Look, there are, I don't need the journalist, a top editor who say that senior editor. I think senior editor. See, Gandhi had a habit, and it's a very endearing habit of this. If you went to him, he said, Most people feel very human when a president seeks their advice. A lot of people will give papers, a lot of people will give draft letters. So he will take them all. He will not say, no, I should take your draft. But this was his way of deciding, engaging public opinion. A.K. Sen, a former law minister, once he loses the job, comes to B.C. Shukla in my car and says, you can discuss the Prime Minister. But there is no what do you do to discuss the Prime Minister. Prime Minister still has a majority. Now, this is free for my judgment. Post of for my judgment, the Supreme Court has laid down the rules, and it's very clear what you do in a state is obviously what you do in a center. If there's an elected leader 
You can't arbitrarily dismiss. You can't dismiss achievements. You can't dismiss a crime. So what the conundrum is that because of the anti-defection law, you see, in England, a Boris Johnson goes because the party stands up. So by about April, May, with Bovers hanging on its head, with postal uh, thing making very unpopular, with three of his close people reserved, your finance minister, now defense minister, resigns. Your cousin, Arun Nehru, resigns. Your closest friend, Arun Singh, resigns, who's dealing with a Bovers fight. Very clearly, there was something amiss. Now, how do you make a prime minister accountable? His party doesn't stand up. So, Gandhi was gauging is the party willing to stand up? Give him up. But although he was skeptical, also, he knew he had been a congressman once. He said, hey, hey, they will not do anything. But he was using moral pressure. He was using psychological pressure on Rajita. Rajita, when we believe, he may be dismissed. I got Billy Lunch and the in under uh, you know and irrepressible yeah. editor of Times of India and you may that's it the Billy Lunch and the Gary is going to discuss I said no Gary just nothing is not going to discuss so I bring him Gary takes him to the back lawn and the very first thing he says to him is I can dismiss the prime minister so Billy Lunch comes back and he said but he says he's going to dismiss so I knew his favorite game which is that you send the message out and this is a possibility. Hoping that that is sort of a moral check. Hoping That's for what? What is the no, hope? He was bringing the Prime Minister to accept that the President has a certain position. You have insulted him till now. Now you realize his utility. You also realize his nuisance. Nuisance by him. Therefore, now restore some semblance of balance. Rebalance the relationship. And then get rebalance. Because after B.P. Singh resigned as Finance Minister, he talked about it because he was the official in finance minister. Rajiv Gandhi, who then at the time of the day the president, sat down in the his study to explain the budget to him. At the beginning of 87, you 86 or something told him to beat him or something. You would have said something nasty. So he was not disrupting the constitutional system. He was using unconstitutional, let's say, he was using novel methods, unconventional methods to bring a prime minister to heal. What did you feel when this was happening? Like, what did you see as your role? You know, we talk a lot about the president. Mm -hmm. As a senior bureaucrat who is, this is an official posting for you. What do you see as your role in this at that time? Did he ask you? Uh, no, thoughts? no. You see, Jali Ji, what we are a great ability to endure and to be who works there. He used to say, anybody's worked with me, he can't work with someone else. See, for instance, when Mr. Bindra was sent back to the job, and because he completed his five years, that's when he's new. The break has come and Rajiv Gandhi is not behaving correctly. Arun Singh had been called in. Uh, Bindra had completed five years because he had gone with the president and I said, no, Mr. And just one fine morning, I don't know who he's here, a soul rushed back. That when he moved in the last day of his being president, what exactly happened? Uh, last day when he came back after swearing in uh, when Trump, we were in his bedroom upstairs, Barclay's old age was there, Dindra was there. And there. And he says when Dindra was going back, I asked him that they would not give me an officer of my choice. So how will I manage? So he says, case you will manage. I will only let him be. And Dindra was a joint secretary. And there were only three of us sitting for the president. Now there are half a dozen, a dozen officers around the president. I mean, no till then. And he said, Pindra said, he said, I said, can I trust him? He said, yes, you can. And on that last day, he says, how right he was. What do you do? You see, this is the kind of certificate very few political leaders make. Because then, even after he retired, and the retirement ministry, if I call and it's from from you, straight away, once he has been told, bounce any one, you know, he gets it. So he had this ability to build relationships with me as one, with political figures, with others. And that was his thing. He used to say, he said, if I have an MA with my thing, and uh, I can have a double mandate, you think you keep me from becoming prime minister? He didn't realize the secret of the Prime Minister of one thing. Could he have been traveling? No, not in that context. He was just 
put in a put in a context that if it came to basic political opinion, we could back anyone. So the reason I ask uh, you how you saw your role is do you want to disagree with them fundamentally on something they did not know that you think you are the question? When the letter was leaked, the letter to the Prime Minister, I mean, a lot of people claim fatherhood of that letter. Explain the letter. Yeah, yeah. this letter is the one where Rajiv Gandhi popped up on the floor of the house. Uh, the question was asked, you're not keeping the president brief, and that is your constitutional duty. So Rajiv Gandhi pops up on the floor of the house. He said, no, I'm keeping the uh, president brief. Now, this gave a golden opportunity to carry him. Because now here's a prime minister who's lying on the floor of the house. The president says he's lying. It becomes a motion uh, against him. Now, so a decision, but he did not decide immediately to write. He went on for a few days. But one senior lawyer, very, very senior lawyer and author, came and gave an eight page letter. As I said, very tough. So I told him, sir, this is your petition to the Privy Council. You write a letter to the Prime Minister, it can't be eight pages. So I actually got sick of that. So one evening, I just, I went up to him. I said, where are you using the letter? Then he literally went, I mean, he went up. Because the author of Rajiv Gandhi spoke of ego 10 days ago. It not been issues so the young will come up. So he said, okay, run down. So I went there, I dropped it. Too bad, straight forward. I gave it to him. He was traveling the next day to Pune. So I went home. And next morning, I find that letter, which was 70, 80 percent of what I had written. 20, 30 percent of something else. And there were raids being conducted on the guests of the Indian Express. Uh, Arun Shobi had a little version, other than me. With one letter, he had broken Rama Koenka from Rajiv Gandhi completely. He had embarrassed him, he had cornered him. And there he was, you know, now, he, now I, uh, the correspondent of Hindu came to me. Uh, he was staying there and uh, he said, what happened? And I said, this will be leaked by the Prime Minister's office. And he thought my boss is leaked him. So I said, this will be leaked by the Prime Minister's office. That was the story next morning in the Hindu. That the PA was leaked. Ah, I had the PA on that first the leaked transfer. You had nothing to do. Then I'm speaking with the Lochan, the deputy press secretary. I could see him humming and hedging on the phone. And then he just go to it and I couldn't make it. Then the Gandhi came back. And by the way, we knew that he had fed mischief control with one move. He had got Indian Express on his side. He had got Rajiv Gandhi in the top. And he was saying on top of the thing, okay, boy, now let's play the game. And Rajiv did not get more from him. So I could have said, you're max. You know, if I have been told by the Greek the Hindu guy, he says, but I can't listen to him. And I told him, only to Galilee you could say that. I said, I'm sorry, sir. You have done it. You explain it to me. I am doing no explaining. No, he didn't tell me, you know, it's your job to do it. I said, we called him and back him back. And, you know, things like that. You could tell him. I said, listen, I will listen. I will listen to him. Now, how do I explain to him why I am explaining? Or how I was telling He said, so he ran me, he must have told the Lojan or somebody else. He said, okay, go well. So with him, you could discuss things like that. Um, then somebody in the staff, uh, you know, somebody came and told me, and he's taking money and giving a partner. I was very upset. I went to his office. I said, look, here I'm going to this office. I'm taking my uh, service. I know the Prime Minister will be happy. I can get punished. You know, I'm taking it all within the presidency. And we've got people here. And you know what he tells me? He says, no, there was a general. This commander came to him and he said, you know, no, those troops of ours are not good. He says, that guy told him, now the war is battle is on. Now these are all the troops we have. We have to fight with these troops. He said, anybody who fight today, he will be taken by the government and he will be paraded around and he say 20 things. So he says, now, we just fight with these groups. There is no. So you know, you could go and tell him that. And you get an answer back and he convince you. He's right. But you let anybody be fired, you have got a witness case to you. Would you say that this was the most fraught relationship between a president and a prime minister that you have witnessed? Well, historically, yes. Any relationship, Pandaji and Rajendra Prasad, 
disagreed over many things, but they never under they will never cross the line of public behavior. Indira Gandhi never crossed the line. I'm just saying uh Rai Khan who has come out, he was recent secretary with Indra Gandhi, and he recounts him, you know, although he's got the name wrong, he says Giri, it's ready. Reddy was the president by Prince Charles Barkley. He said Indira Gandhi was spitting by the British ruling family. And she was dying to go for Prince Charles and die on a wedding. But Freddie said, No, I won't go. And she didn't fight with him over that. She let him go. But he said she grumbled and grumbled and grumbled. But then she got an opportunity. But you know, this is Indira Gandhi. She had one game. But she didn't want a public fight. She relied in public, and this is a mistake that Rajiv Gandhi made that he got so happy that he made it a public. And what can be taught him uh, in this was that there is something called native coming, there's something called native wisdom, there's something called political sense, there's something called justice in all this. And you look at Rajiv Gandhi, he never recovered from that. One of the big constitutional debates is around Article 75, right? So how 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 much can the president block a legislation that she or he does not agree with at the moment? And of course, Gandhi and uh, Gandhi did that over the hospital, and you know, we, we could have been swooped on at that time had there not been that very public debate. But strictly speaking, can the president stop a legislation? You see, this is a new thing that is happening. It's after the 44th Amendment, the Dhanka Party restored many of the powers of the president, and not all of them, which are not we have taken away the emergency, the 42nd Amendment. But one little thing that remains that the president can once return a bill or any decision of the cabinet, but second time is second. Well, he came up with a normal thing, and people have called him a pocket veto, and he divides no loyalty. He says, uh, take a thing, yeah, how long I can apply my money. <laughs> He's writing constitution and he's saying it. simply say, now what is the option the prime minister has? Prime minister can impeach the president. You need two thirds in Lok Sabha, two thirds in Rajya Sabha. The chief of Rajya Sabha, we did that. The prime minister, Modi doesn't have. So I take the example of the farmer's bills. If the president had simply sat, President knew that it passed wrongly. Voting has not been done in Rajasthan. Division was called for, it was not allowed. So there was no proper vote. They rushed it. What the president does is simply by training, and the education was already started. The education was picking up steam. If that had been delayed by a few weeks, the president would have said, I'm not money, my money in law, and check it in the Supreme Court. Maybe if the Prime Minister had realized that it's a storm winning, it would have been easier to take it back from the President than to take it back after you get it. So there is a role that the President can play. He realizes that it's headed in a direction which is, because it's both, as I've said, is the same three lines which the US President swears by. That will depend, protect, and defend the Indian Constitution. How was the pressure he came under when he applied in this form? No, by then he was. Because that's also remember he was a congressman. He had relationships in the party, even if not uh, a, a good relationship with Rajiv Gandhi. There would have been back channel <laughs> nudges and issues. See, the back channel was Arkhan and I as Indra, which Rajiv Gandhi finished at the first instance by not only firing him. But even holding him hostage, responsible, uh, holding, uh, a lead, uh, having an inquiry into his role in this country. So there was that pattern was formed. Other one was Arun's. So by the period of 87, Arun's senior design, he left. So there were no channels left because Rajiv Gandhi thought he didn't require any channels. You know, he was the Supreme ruler of India and uh, president is so now Gandhi is delaying is a flying it's mine and mine with mine with mine with mine. What is what is the government doing at this point? See government by then was under tax. Uh newspapers were then relatively free, you know, writing editorials, opposition was making noise, public opinion was building up against it. Uh I don't know whether this happened before or after the Haryana election. 
where Congress on four seats till sunset, and a fifth button love this thing the last one. So five seats and a house for the top. So Rajiv Gandhi's stop was done and going down further. He then he started reaching out and show, you know, started showing personal courtesies in public, etc. But it was too little too late because the Indian public never fought with him, never fought with him. Uh, in, in, uh, what did he actually think of Rajiv? I think he, both of them look. Gandhi was a very astute leader of other people. Like after he went and met Rajan without asking him, simply from question and answer, he told the next morning he had a call. He knew straight away. He knew the man, he knew his tactics, and from question and answer, he immediately knew. Then I've recounted in this how to manage to know how to make out our own name and close enough. How tells we had gone to Kashmir and not for instance, we were supposed to go to Kashmir. Our own name was already there. It's a state internal affairs, internal security, next to the de facto home minister, very far from it. And we are happy. So he calls in the safety and he says, primarily uh, he says. He says, look, if you go there, Jack Bowen will be running around looking after him. He is not going to pay any attention. But in public, the question was, I want the governor to pay attention to Arunji. So I don't want any distraction. So now look at how he functions differently at different levels. So we met in public uh, and think of this. Eventually, Arun Nehru, uh, the group, but he was still there. So Gary, when he went there, he went to call him. Uh, to part of his health. He said, okay, today we're going to figure out whether it's a break between the cousins or not. So he goes there and he's chatting up. And he suddenly says, Arunji, he has to go to the house. He has to go to the house. He has to go to the Now, Arun Nehru has taken a back. He had not shown over. He had been taken away from him. Now, in that split second, he couldn't say, no, 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 I can't think. He just remained quiet, which confirmed he had not been concerned. So, you know, this shows that his few politicians in Congress who have risen, he's not the only one, many others, not too many others, but many others. They, in a quote, you learn how to ask questions, you learn how to answer questions in a manner where what you're thinking is not conveyed. What the other person is thinking, you are able to decide. And that kind of mastery, which one witnessed up close, was, you know, it's, it's really politics and action. You mentioned the farm agitation, which is a recent issue of great uh, some residents here. Uh, let's talk about another issue that would be residents here. And what you know, we mentioned, uh, just as we mentioned, Dukha, uh, briefly in his opening remarks. Talk a little bit about that phase mm -hmm. and, and how the Gandhi had made a different move his career, his professional life, and been entirely Look, I've said in the book, there are two ways of operating. He had, I thought he was going to resign because when he came back, his last words, which I've heard before he went up to his apartment, when he came back to the world, that he was. So I thought probably he was going to. Design can come, but it, it, but it would have worsened the relationship of six to the nation. You can see some of the results still, but people are very angry. So he took the anger on himself. He became the lightning conductor. So people are angry with him. The afternoon is for providing the exam. Okay, he had resigned. So with the proper attack. Uh, the rebellion in the troops came up first. They may have been more bloodshed. 
So the mechanism of that legislation would be very different. Uh, but look at it from the other point. He has not been chosen just by Punjab. He is not there at the scene. He may be chosen as a seat. Now he is everybody's president. Therefore, do you want him to become completely partisan and only thinking about the government? Or does he pay the price by his own community condemning him? Thinking ill of him. Something in my village told me. I went to the village. And then the native president was like, I don't know He said, I don't know Talking sense. So the villager was thinking, why do you give your uh, you know top knot in the hand of someone that he's sworn in that he's around? I think he misread that completely. He had seen every kind of human specimen on his way up. Look, the day Queen Elizabeth came, uh, my room used to be upstairs, those days, Mudra was downstairs, and that veranda you see, I could stand there and those days you would drive up in a carriage. And so then can she are coming up and get it from uh, below the south block uh, with the bodyguards and the so the commandant leading them. And here he is sitting with the queen. Here is a man who was put in a jail by a little Raja, not even a Maharaja. He told us never a Maharaja, he was a Raja. The viceroy's representative there who made this Raja friend. That representative was reporting to me. Viceroy. Viceroy was reporting to the Secretary of State. Who was reporting to the Queen or the King Emperor? Here is a man who's traveled up at Delhi. He's sitting there in the Viceroy's Royal next to the Queen Emperor, Queen Empress. So it's a hell of a movement. So obviously he had some skill set. So he went there. Here are some people who move up in the system. We talk of uh, Rahul Gandhi or Rajin Gandhi. They were born in the Prime Minister's house. So if you, one became prime minister or the other becomes prime minister, it's not a great movement. You largely, you know, retaining what you... Do you think you got? Do you think you should have been At that stage, I felt yes. Did you, because you were all angry. You, no, I didn't. I was not that close to that thing because Vidra was still there. Uh, when a year later, Vidra left, I was reporting to him. Till then, I was reporting to Vidra. In fact, Vidra only said, when we were going to Amnesty, he said, sir, uh, we should take KC along because we knew I was the only chart in that network. Uh, so he realized I had a bit too much to So he said, hey, KC sir should come along. And President said, sure. So we had a with the flag. And Pindra was exposing me to that. And he was the main my views. I am not even going to argue with Pindra. To argue with Pindra, it's like the main to president because he had presidents here and full trust. But he was very, Pedra could be, that was the peak of his career. He was very distracted. And he could be sometimes irritatingly independent. Uh, where he would simply say, no, you know, the stand, this is wrong, etc. So he was a great aid that way. And Raji Gandhi made a serious mistake by sending him back. Because if that link had continued, Pedra, Bhavan Vishnu, after all, uh, Raji Gandhi took, uh, he took Gavan back after they were out of power. But they broke that chain from which this problem goes. And, and you, you seem to be suggesting that if it had been a revelation not to do star, it would have been better for Gandhi's career, but not to see him. Yes, I have no doubt it's in that. <laughs> because it would have worsened the situation then. Ultimately, say, confrontation with the, uh, the Union government would have increased. Union government being stronger would have still overpowered the seats. But you would have had much greater And then you would have taken much, much longer for normal seat to be done. Something seems still not be done. But still, that means that correctly or incorrectly, I must recount this is not in the book. I was in Pakistan when I was a national secretary for talks on the nuclear matters. And uh, as we were coming out of the foreign office, we had connected to media. And uh, a journalist from behind, he says, Pahle karte hai, te ko bhele te So I said, Koi ida. I thought, ida. Maya, Why should you come and talk? A prime minister was sick, Mulmohan Singh was sick. JJ was then the army chief. 
That's why I want Ami Chi to the secret. So why should the Sikh come and talk? He didn't want to see. He had no answer. So the reason I could answer back to Pakistan is this. Was we were able to get that where you could get a Sikh Ami Chi, where you could even get uh, probably not a political strong, but definitely a highly qualified prime minister who was a Sikh. Uh, I can't imagine that happening if we had worse of the, the, the normalcy would have come. Normalcy comes in every country, but at a greater cost. Did you have an assumption about Gandhi that you have to change the concept of your own country? He grew on you, like, I'm just going to tell you, when the biography was, I didn't realize, when Bindra then, for that. And then Mr. Batra, who wrote the biography, uh, had retired at station director on their day. So Mr. Patra was brought in because he retired, I was still a BS. He retired in a director's grade. So in Rashtri Bhavan, the pecking order is very important. So on the civil side, the secretary and the director are BS. The director will always be hired to in front of all. So I went and told the secretary, I said, sir, I'm willing to report to an IS officer. But as a foreign service officer, I will not report. I will not have to anybody above me who is not from an audit service. So he went and told the president, and the next morning I came, I didn't go to office. So I came home, and those days there were no mobile. So I took out my car, went to golf club, got a credit, it was not very crowded. I sat in my room for the earlier. I know who served on these terms. When I came back, my wife said, Where the hell have you been? You know, President has sent the car thrice. His ADC is car. He is saying, Go and get that go, where the hell is he here? So I said, okay, the president sent the right twice. Now look at it, how he dealt with it. So I went in and I told him, he said, there's no secretary school. He said, sit down. He said, I've got the right to write, uh, uh, to write my biography. Now I told secretary, you will move to Pindra's room. Now that sent the signal to the government that he's inheriting Pindra's house. Now you decide. What part of Pindra's work you want to do, or you want to get to Batra? Where do you get a boss like this? Uh, how do you say no to a man like this? I don't have to so long. I don't have to normal effect. No Pangala Prime Minister. No superstitions, but then I would have to go like that. We have a few minutes left. Uh, two questions. One is what are the learnings for today, for today's Punjab, for today's India? So today's debate around, you know, is to be touched a little bit about that, about it, is to the autonomy of difference of the arms of hypocrisy. What are the learnings for those years in your life? That is why I said it's good I would book now. If I had resigned in 88, I would have book mainly about anything. And if I had resigned or come back to headquarters when they were shifting me from Iran, again, I would have not written about this. But because I had come back to headquarters, I had got a very important position, became secretary. So then when I retired, I didn't immediately write. Because I said, let me establish myself in public space as an independent analyst. If I had written, then they'll say, hey, he's anti Congress, he's Congress later. I mean, now if I say something about the government, they call me a Congi. Now I said, guys, read my, read my book. From me, the guy will beat me up here. To read something fast. I am in the middle. Whoever is, I think they call me different size. He doesn't need you or any other guy who's uh, there before. So that's why I've written one third of the book. is on danger to democracy all over the world. Uh, there's a recession, a democratic recession in Brazil. Lula's today, only yesterday I was reading. Uh, Bolsonaro spread from the country is staying in Florida. And he's issued gun licenses. And many of them in Brazil, there are thousands of guns his supporters have. So now they're asking them to, some, uh, you know, they cancel the licenses. They try to get the guns in. And there is a danger to democracy in Brazil. That's the largest Latin American country. There's a danger to democracy in America. Trump is leading the Republican nomination race. So what is there again? He may win again. After he's sentenced by a New York court for sexual abuse, his study never went up. His supporters don't even hear about 
or anybody is saying that's something in India. It's something in other countries. If you stop listening to the others, if you do that bhakti, then you are just saying, my wife could be right and you are talking wrong, you are not wrong. That's why the role of the president becomes even more important. What do you mean? Would you call it religion and democracy? Would you simply say it's, it's a kind of populist politics? Because the fact is that all of the leaders that you mentioned, they have one fair as well. It's not that they have captured power. People have worked with the name. By the same system that has been in use in these countries, are the Americans and the Brazilians for decades. True, but each time such a leader comes in, he tweaks the institutions. Trump has already tweaked the Supreme Court of the US. It's what a prominent right thing is. It can take two deaths and a democratic majority and a democratic to even change it. It's not completely right. Uh, similarly, in Brazil, the changes, similarly in India, some of the changes which have been brought about are continuing to be brought about. May be permanent, may take a long time to change. You know, because you demonize the liberal. To demonize anybody who talks about the economy, car, car market can, A can, that can. So you start, liberal democracy start getting hurt. I think it's up as a little bit up. In Delhi, it is a victim. In Punjab, it is a perfect victim. It does exactly the same in Punjab. What BJP does to it in Delhi, which means anybody who gets 80 percent seats, he behaves similarly. Every Indian prime minister. Who's won a majority of the Indra Gandhi other than them, whether it's Indra Gandhi or it's Swadhi Gandhi or it's now, starts being autocratic, starts being intolerant of the same. So you leave some permanent marks uh, over a period of time. So that is the point that is India changing permanently? The male's input next to the speaker table. Now, those people are not stupid who took this base and put it in a museum. Because they set out to create a secular, uh, caste neutral, fair, educational society. Now, are you changing? The current government makes no bones about wanting to change that now. They are not comfortable with that. So, Nehru is seen. Same. Uh, Nehru is seen there, but Nehru put it away in a museum. He didn't put it in the parliament. Uh, now, that's a separate debate. Question is of the separation between church and state. I'm going everywhere. Like somebody like Trump, there is no church and no state. But he will, he will just appeal to his right wing, um, you know, total right wing. So, how do you join the talk between what you learned at that moment to okay. argument making today? What I learned that that's why I'm saying the composition of the rights fund needs to be changed. We have an inherent problem with the way our house is structured. Uh, today, if you look at the number of states where BJP has formed a government after winning a majority, is really Gujarat, UP, Uttarakhand, Assam. Other places, they have not got a majority, they sort of formed the government. Other places, they don't have a government. In the state, yes. Yeah, no, but I'm saying a footprint. So you're saying that it's not, not be based on proportion? It should not be based on population. Today, we more or less follow the states. And see, we have followed the American Senate to the extent that the Indian vice president presides over the Rajya Sabha. Like the US president, vice president presides over the Senate. Also, every two years, one third of the membership has changed. But in America, little Hawaii, sent the same number of people as being California. Oh, you won't have it overnight. You'll probably have to have a sliding scale two for Magalia, four for Punjab, and six for UP. But you need to even it up because the vice president is elected by two houses. In the presidential election, the states, uh, you be get very large number of votes, but more than that, the looks are in the right spot. So even if a large part of India is in the opposition, they can't get a president on which there's consensus. But that's a large debate for another day. At the end, with maybe you telling us a little bit about the Elizabeth. With it, I think it will be a nice note uh, uh, to, to end this part of the evening on. Uh, tell us about that. I know it's in the book, but I pretty really much get it. You see, what surprised me, uh, because I think you read it, and I'll tell you what Indra Gandhi said, I'll probably put in this part. Because I was chatting with him, I was with him, so he had to go to 
that sold it. And uh, Gary, we keep speaking out, keep interpreting. So, why is uh, this sort of rough factor standing there? Because in the middle was it not happy, everybody else in this will keep away in our Shoka hall before the bank. So, we had a speaker, all six or four of them. Uh, there was the president and there was the prime minister. And there was uh, Duke of Edinburgh and the Queen. Uh, so, when we were speaking, I interpreted in Gandhi and spoke English. Indra Gandhi wanted to now look at her. And this is the specification she had. When she wanted to speak to the Queen, uh, she drew the president into it and started interpreting. She turns to me and says, May I? I was in India, also interpret. Who am I? But that is her way of calling her friend there. Into she's very of accent, he's not fluent in English, but she doesn't want to embarrass him. So she was joining into the conversation. Jarkhand was for completely carrying on, showing how brilliant he was. So Gary turned around and said, Your Majesty, uh, Mr. Jarkhand was my Minister of State when I was Chief Minister. So the Queen, during one matter, had a great sense of humor, and she could lower and uh, raise her level of conversation from banter to serious. She says, For guys, you know, I'm one of the best breed, maker of preachers I had. He joined politics and became a speaker of the hundred <laughs> parts of parliament. Now, Gandhi not be left behind, he now thrust the dagger in. He said, Your Majesty, you're a queen. I am the mere humble human being. If my minister of state would become a speaker, yours would have gone even further. <laughs> so, I don't even know which way to go. <laughs> So it shows you that if you have a sense of humor and if you can banter, you know, language of caste or class, so many readers could hear the dish. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Casey. Uh, there's a lot to talk about in the book, so pick up a copy if you have it. It's a of history. Irrespective of what your political meaning or ideological meaning is, it's a real slice of history. Uh, I know a lot of you will have questions, but I've been told that we're uh, running short on time. Yes, so but uh, Casey is there to talk to you directly with any questions. Okay. Yeah. So let's have a big round of applause. For and thank you, Barkha. Let me thank you very much. She's driven all the way from Delhi specifically for this. But probably what you don't know is the farmers are crawling your way, blocking your way back. I didn't tell you that. I didn't tell you that. But you may have another story because the women, because tomorrow, you're going tonight? Tomorrow, the women are gathering in Ambala. They, no, no, then they're going there to support the wrestlers and also to oppose the inauguration. Okay. <laughs> and uh, there's a bottle available for the signing of this book, I've been told before. Thank you. <laughs> Are you serious? What that? Is